Warning, this is a product review. The product in question was provided free of charge in exchange for an honest review. The opinions expressed herein are my own and completely subjective in nature. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments section below. Thank you. Okay, so today I'm going to do something a little different. I have done reviews in the past and they've been fairly successful. I tend to only review products that I feel like I would use um, in my day-to-day -day whatever, um, either in the shop or around the house. So the good folks at Sansi uh, reached out to me and they make a variety of LED products and they asked me if I would like to try out one of their new offerings which is a LED floodlight. Uh, the timing may have been a little off. I just got done uh, rebuilding the rear end of my daughter's Ford Ranger and I sure could have used a good light at that time but um, either way, uh, I still have a lot of work to do on that truck and I've got a lot of work to do in my basement where light is not um, very plentiful and so I'm hoping that this works out so uh, I don't have to worry about working in a low light situation. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to open up the box and take a look at how it's packaged and what comes inside. I have not yet taken this out of the box or anything, so this is how it comes. So you get a, uh, a little welcome card like this, a nice thin two-page user manual, and then the light itself. And as you can see, these are some pretty serious looking LEDs. Uh, I really right just my first impressions is it looks like a professional lighting rig style light let me try to pull it out of the packaging here and I'll tell you I'll show you what I'm talking about so the housing is plastic sorry the housing here is plastic uh, it does have a steel bracket um, it has some locking thumb screws and that allows it to be able to be tilted and then the, if you attach it depending on the way you attach it you can also swivel it so it does have swivel and tilt construction is decent as far as I can tell it does not feel cheap in the hands I'm curious on how it handles the heat that will be generated by these massive LED lights. Um, I don't see a heat sink in there, but they are mounted on some sort of a ballast which may double as a heat sink. You can actually see directly through the unit which is probably good for airflow and helping to keep things cool. So that is the unboxing portion of this review. Let's go ahead and take a look at how it looks when it's plugged in. So one thing I have noticed is that I do not see a, an on-off switch of any sort. So once you're plugged in, you're going. I'd like to also take a look at some of the specifications that are on the bottom of this. Let me bring it up to the camera a little bit better. See if you guys can see that. I'm not sure if it's focusing, um, but it does say Sansi LED floodlight, and it gives you the model number, the input voltage, 90 to 264 volts. So that means this can be used overseas, outside of the United States, where they use 220. The rated power is 50 watts. The the color is a 5700K. Um, it also, brown I think is the color of this housing, and then 120 degrees, I'm not sure about that, it's either how much it 
is supposed to tilt or an actual temperature, maybe a maximum temperature. I'm not sure. We're going to find out though. So let me just set this down. I'm going to plug it into a power strip. I'm going to plug it into a power strip that's turned off and then I'll use the switch on the power strip to turn it on. So, gauging light, being able to tell how bright something is on video is a very difficult thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the camera down and I'm going to compare um, a couple of different types of lights in this, in this workshop and hopefully you can get an idea of how bright this light actually is. Okay, so I'm going to just keep this same shot going. I'm right here behind the camera. Um, so this is what my shop looks like in all of its messy glory with my regular shop lights, which are LED lights. Um, I've made a video about those and I can link that video up in the cards and in the description below in case you're interested on what those lights are. But they give me a nice, even, bright light that is easy to work with. Just for reference, this is what the shop looks like when all the lights are off and I have some sunlight coming in. It's pretty late in the day and uh, so this, it's not at the brightest part of the day. But obviously I can't get anything done in here if I don't have any lights on at all. This is what the shop looks like with the two 100 watt um, CFL lights that I have um, that actually came installed in the garage before I turned it into a shop. This was the only light that I had to work with when I was building the shop and that's kind of the reason why I upgraded to the LED lights that I have in my ceiling. There is adequate light to get work done but it's really not bright enough for filming and it's not bright enough to actually be able to pay attention to the detail of the work that I'm doing and the older I get it feels like the more light that I need to do my work. Finally, this is what my shop looks like with just the Sansi light turned on. So obviously this isn't going to replace my overhead lights, but I do have to admit that the light output on this unit is pretty impressive for how small the unit is. Um, this would definitely work if you're in a tight corner in the basement, if you're underneath the vehicle, or if you just need a little bit extra focused light in a small area. Let's say if you're filming something very intricate and you just need a lot of light to show all the detail of that uh, thing that you're working on. Um, this is definitely better than what I was using previously. I was just using one of those little free lights from Harbor Freight that you get. Um, when I was underneath the truck and like I said I really wish I had this available because I don't think um, I would have had any trouble seeing anything when this was underneath the truck. I'm gonna go ahead and step in front of the camera now. So the light is very bright and I want to avoid looking directly at it or it'll leave sunspots in my eyes. Um, but if I needed to work in front of this light regularly all I would need to do is put a simple diffuser on it and I think not only would it help keep from um, blinding me but also it would help spread the light out and make it more even and soften some of these some of these shadows these harsh shadows that you see back here on the wall so I was going to compare this 50 watt LED floodlight to one of these 250 watt halogen floodlights. I was expecting the performance to be similar and maybe the LED to be a little bit brighter than this. Um, but as these things do, the bulb burnt out on it. And um, I think some of the uh, downfalls to these types of lights are first of all, they get very, very hot. And I'm going to test how hot this uh, LED light gets in just a minute. But because it gets very hot, it has to have heat sinks built in all around it. 
It needs a cage across the front so you don't burn yourself on the lens. And then also, if you bump it while it's hot, you're bound to blow out the filament that creates the light. So that's probably what happened to this guy. Um, these things get knocked around. You can see it's got, I don't know if you can tell, but it's got drywall dust all over it because that's when I would use something like this is when I'm, you know, remodeling a room or doing some type of work where the electrical is not on in that room. So anyway, I was going to do a comparison. Um, well, the, the cost of a new bulb for one of these is the same as the cost of a brand new one of these. And so I'm just too cheap to justify buying a bulb just for this review. But let's go ahead and focus back on the 50 watt LED floodlight. You know, I used to have a um, one of those FLIR infrared <clears throat> temperature dealios, but somebody from work borrowed it and I never got it back. And on top of that, I can't find my, my no contact thermometer, so we're just going to have to do this more of a um, hands-on type of test. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this light on, and then I'm just going to feel how much heat radiates from it without touching it at first. And then I'm going to let this light run for a good 15 minutes. Then I'll come back and I'll see how if I can handle it if the plastic gets soft. Because remember, this is a plastic housing that this is in. And uh, I, I will just kind of feel around to see how warm it actually gets. If, if there's a spot where I feel like I can't touch it for too long without hurting myself, I'll let you guys know. So right off the bat, you know, I can feel some warmth coming off the lights, um, but it's not even like, I don't know, it doesn't, it doesn't even compare to like a, a regular light bulb that you screw into the ceiling. I mean, it is warm, and I'm sure if I press my hand on, it would, it would eventually get hot. I'm actually touching the surface right now, and it's not bad. Let me try something. I just wanted to see if this light was bright enough to show my bones through my hands, but apparently not so much. But I am touching the surface of the lights right now, and they're not, it's not hot enough to, uh, to cause me concern or anything. So I'm going to let this run for a good 15 minutes and then I'll come back to see how warm the housing and everything has gotten in that time. Okay, so I've um, actually left this on for a half hour just to give it the best chance of getting warm. So I'm going to kind of feel around it now. There really is nothing the case is the same temperature as the room, maybe just slightly warmer. The cage around the lights, a little bit warmer. The lights themselves, look at that, I can still touch them. I'm pressing my hand onto the lights. This is after being on for 30 minutes. So you can color me impressed. I've never had um, access to these kind of high output LEDs before so um, that's pretty impressive especially considering here let me kill this light so you can see <clears throat> especially considering when you use one of these style let me zoom out you actually have to put some thought into where you're gonna place these because you don't want to have these around any type of flammable materials or curtains or shades or anything that could catch fire because the the halogen style lights get so hot and so nowadays it's really hard to rate a light a light's brightness based on its wattage because these LEDs are so efficient they, they generate very little heat and so what happens is 
a light like this that takes 250 watts, well, a lot of that wattage is being trans or being converted to heat. Now, this is only a 50 watt light, and it can sit put out the same amount of light, but it generate because it generates less heat. More of that energy is actually being turned into light instead of heat. So so far, I've been thoroughly impressed with this light. Um, Unfortunately, I don't have any other LED lights to compare it to, aside from the ones that are in my ceiling, but that's apples and oranges because these lights are meant for lighting large spaces, and this is meant for lighting a smaller space. But before I get into my final review of this product, there's one modification I think is entirely appropriate for something like this. What you see here is my action cam uh, magic arm mount that I made a couple years ago. And basically it's one of those magic arms, the friction arms, um, attached to a spring clamp. And I thought, what better <coughs> accessory for this light than to have a spring clamp attachment for it so you can pretty much clamp it anywhere you want and so that's what I'm going to attempt to do right now. So take the light here, put that bolt through there. If this ends up working out I'll just have to make another one of these for permanent. Let me flip around the other side here. All right, so let's go try it out. Okay, so let's say I'm working in a certain area. I need a, I need a little overhead light. Um, I have a shelf that is li lining the back wall of my shop, and it's about 18 inches to 2 feet down from the ceiling, so it would make a great spot to be able to attach a light temporarily. So let me attach my clamp here, like that, and then plug in my light, there we go. So maybe uh, Sansi should consider offering a clamp like this as an accessory for one of these lights. I think that would make the light ten times more useful. Okay, final verdict time. The limited experience that I have with certain floodlights, being these traditional style ones that we use, or um, large flashlights or spotlights or anything that generates light, I have to say that I'm pretty impressed with this little light. Now, now granted, Sansi did offer me this light for free if I were to do a review for them. Now, they did not ask me to do a good review, um, a positive review, or anything. They just wanted my impression. And I think they did that because they're confident that they have a good product here. So let me go through some of the things that I like about this light and some of the things that I don't like about this light. Number one, for the power usage, this light is very bright. It um, is just as bright or brighter than a standard incandescent floodlight and yet it consumes about a fifth of the power that it, that a halogen light would, would consume. On top of that, this light does not get hot, which I used to work in the lighting industry. I used to do stage lighting and hot lights are always a concern. Um, because they can catch things on fire. Just the peace of mind that would come from having a really super bright light that doesn't get hot, I think makes this worth it just for that reason alone. Some of the things that I would improve on this, I don't know how well or how long the housing is going to hold up to regular use. This is a light that I believe is designed to be used in a construction setting or in an auto shop type setting 
where you need to get a lot of light in a, in an area where light usually doesn't exist, but whether it's under a hood, under a car, in a room that's being remodeled that doesn't have any electricity. So this light's going to get put into a toolbox, it's going to be moved around, bumped around, and I don't know um, how long these plastic grills and this plastic housing would last under that type of abuse. Now I give them credit for making this bracket here out of steel, um, and so at least this part will definitely hold up for sure. And I'm not saying that this won't hold up, I just don't know without using this for a long time. It would be a concern of mine. I also wish Sansi would give you options to add attachments to further maximize the potential of this light. This light is designed to go on type on a tripod or a type of a stand. And I'm I guess you can find those just as easy. If you're shopping on Amazon for this light, Amazon will more than likely suggest a tripod that this light would work with. But something as simple as a spring clamp, like what I've attached to mine, would makes this light ten times more useful at a very little cost. And I hope that Sansi will someday offer this as an option for their lights. Now let's talk about price. Remember, I said that this light has about the same output as one of these lights. One of these lights only costs about $10. Right now, at the time of filming, this light is right around $50. Which would seem like a high price for a floodlight when there's other options available for about a fifth of the price. But like I've said in the past, these lights don't last very long, the bulbs burn out pretty easily. This light comes with a five-year warranty. Sansi has it written right in their instruction manual and they call it a five-year unlimited warranty and they give you an email address to reach out to them if there were any problems with your light. So that'll give you peace of mind that you're making a good investment when you buy this product. And if you look in the description below you will also be able to click on a link to get 25% off this light. So that'll help with the cost of this light. I think it's well worth the price, and I think that you definitely get what you pay for in terms of quality and performance. So there you have it. This is, that's my review of the Sansi 50 watt LED floodlight. Um, I hope you enjoyed the review. I hope it was informative to you if you're in the market for something like this. Definitely check them out on Amazon. Again, use that link that I put in the description below. Help you get 25% off of the, the price of one of these. Um, my time with this light has been limited. I do plan on using it in the immediate future to work on my daughter's truck and do some work in my basement. So if I have any issues come up or if something unexpectedly pleasant happens, I will be sure to share with you guys in a future video. So please, leave your comments below, leave your suggestions, leave me your impressions on what you think about this product, and um, I look forward to seeing those comments. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.